Good morning and welcome to this LKW Family Mediation video for day two of Family Mediation Week. And in this video today, I wanted to talk a bit about why is it important for separated parents to have a, a good working relationship with each other. And from, from my experience as a mediator, there will definitely be people watching this video who are thinking, well, it's a no-brainer, of course you need to have a good relationship. But equally, there will be people who are watching this who will say, well, actually, you can co-parent without having a good relationship. And there's kind of three main reasons that I wanted to touch on, on why um, I think it's important that co-parents have a good working relationship. And all of the examples that I'm going to use in the video are taken from um, people that I have come into contact with either personally or professionally. So the first thing is that children are half of one parent and half of the other parent and if you are openly hostile about the other, per the other parent then that's kind of dissing half of your child and half of what's in them and I would also say that it doesn't need to be open hostility there just needs to be a you know that kind of tension like if you've um, if you've ever met up with some friends and you can just tell that there has been some kind of argument beforehand there's that tension and you know children pick up on that in the same way that adults do so they can feel that there is some kind of negativity about the other parent and that's half of them and one of the things that I sometimes hear is oh well the other parent hasn't been particularly involved I've always dealt with everything but for your child there's always been two parents even if one of them worked long hours or worked away they have always known that there have been two parents in their life and when you were together, you would have talked about the other parent. Maybe there were photos up. That parent was very much a, a large part of their child's life, even if their, the time they actually spent with their child was small. So by being negative or hostile about the other parent, you are putting your child in a confusing situation where they may be thinking, well, I love, I love this parent, but they're saying bad things about my other parent and that's confusing because that's half of me. So it's also possible that your child then thinks maybe there's bad things in me. The second reason is practicalities. Having a child share two homes requires some level of organisation in terms of, you know, where is the school uniform? Has school uniform been washed? Books need to be in the right place, clothes need to be in the right place. Um, things like pick-up times, clubs, it's really important that each parent knows where they've got to be at the right time so that child's not left for any period of time somewhere. It's also to deal with issues. If your child is being bullied at school or your child has fallen behind or is struggling with a subject, if you can talk to each other, it's much easier for you both to be able to put in place a strategy to help your child. Thirdly, is the kind of position that a child ends up being in, where you've both come to a school event, but your child either didn't know that you were both going to be there, or there's some kind of issue, and your child walks into a room and mum is on one side and dad's on the other side and your child has to sit with one of their parents, has to sit with their parents or sit down and your child knows that this is a loaded decision, which parent do I go and sit with because I'm going to leave one on their own and one of them's going to have me sat with them and that's a really hard position for your child to be in and it's it's something that comes from lack of communication about what's happening so that you can't say to your child in advance, we'll both be there, you know, we'll make a plan for what's going to happen. One of the things I talk about a lot in these videos is also future events like graduations, weddings, things like that. 
do you want your child's wedding plans to be focused on how can I get mum and dad to be in the same room together? Oh, how is this going to work? They really hate each other. How can I manage this? Wedding preparation should be about, I'm in love and I want to have an amazing dress or I want to get married at this hotel that I've always driven past and loved or those should be the children's wedding plans, not focusing on how on earth can we do this in a way that won't make my mum and dad uncomfortable. There, the good news is that if you are in this situation, there are so many resources now to help you to improve things and to move forward. And it doesn't turn around overnight when there's been a really sour and difficult relationship for whatever reason, it's really hard to flick a switch and go, yeah, okay, we're gonna be happy together. And there's a whole lot of steps that go from that moment to the moment where things get better. But there are support services that can help you and mediation plays a huge part in that, in taking you gradually from the place where you are now to the place where you want to be. If you do want to find a mediator near you, then you can use the Family Mediation Council or you can use Resolution's website. Resolution particularly has quite a lot of helpful resources on it. The Family Mediation Week website also has loads of things about parenting together and mediation, particularly during this mediation week. So do have a look at familymediationweek.co.uk. Thank you.